Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment below. All those things help send this channel and these videos into the algorithm. All right, I can't believe it. We get to do another Dream Lovers. I feel like it has been forever. Um, if it was up to me, I would only do Dream Lovers, but it is not up to me. I come on here and just distribute whatever it is the Lord has that week, okay? Um, but I want to take you guys on part of a journey in my life. Okay. This dream is a prophecy over my life. This dream is a prophetic dream. It's a God coloration dream. If you're new to my channel, you don't know what in the world that means. Um, basically we dream in like similar to filters on in photography, black and white, gray and white, sapia, kind of a natural lighting, whatever. Um, and then, so each one of those types of dreams are very important and, and it is key in understanding what type of dream it is, whether it's prophetic going to come to pass, whether, um, who, who's talking to you basically. Okay. Cause dreams are spiritual. All right. Um, but this dream is a prophecy over my life. It is a promise from God over my life. I had this dream almost two years ago. Okay. Almost two years exactly ago. Okay. Um, and so just to kind of hit the nail on the head and, uh, coincide with something we talked about a couple videos ago, if you were watching, um, why prophecies sometimes fail, um, quote unquote fail, because maybe it's not necessarily that they fail, but it's not time. Prophecy takes time. Okay. And I talked about that a lot of prophecy is slow cooker status. It is not throw it in the microwave. Sometimes God does work like that. Sometimes we see, um, I'm thinking particularly of a dream inside of, or two dreams that were inside of the book of Genesis, um, chapter 40, 41, something like that. Um, where Joseph is in prison with those two, uh, uh, prisoners, right? One was the cupbearer, one was the baker. And what jo what Joseph interpreted and prophesied happened in three days. Okay. That's pretty cool. It's powerful and it does happen, but a lot of times it is not the case. Prophecy is something that is slow cooker status. So this is a prophecy that was given to me over my life two years ago. And while I say it still hasn't come to pass, I want you to know that I am sharing it because I am in the process of it coming to pass. Okay. Um, maybe you watched a video of mine, a dream lovers video called cliff fall. There was another dream there that was a prophecy over my life that I, I said, um, some of the details I have, some I don't. Um, but I, I'm guessing that the situation, the dream had to do with some sort of area in my life where I needed healing. And I believe that that dream is linked with this dream. Um, go back and watch that if you haven't seen it. But for those of you who have seen, it, I just want to refresh you real quick because it's very powerful. The journey that the Lord has me on. A lot of times you see people that have like, you know, the gift of deliverance or the gift of healing. And you think they just woke up there. Um, sometimes that is the case, just like we talked about. Sometimes God moves and he just does it right. And he moves in great power. And sometimes he's got a process that he's preparing and, and, um, laying the groundwork for that kind of thing. Okay. Well, in that dream, I was looking for a yellow flower and, um, I, I fell off this cliff. Well, instead of fall, I cry out to the Lord. And instead of falling, I said, um, I was being pushed along by his angels. And at times I was even going up higher instead of falling. Um, and then I fell over here and I landed over here and I said, you know, um, something like it wasn't enough to break me or kill me just enough to let me learn my lesson. And at the end I gave a, um, kind of an, in, uh, like a guesswork interpretation as to what this might point to some sort of area of healing in my life. Okay. Well, I wrestled over that dream and prayed over the dream. God has kept many deals, many details private. And he does this. Okay. He's kept in private for whatever. But, um, I looked, I was looking at the dream the wrong way. I was looking at it like it was an area of correction. Um, and the Lord corrected me on that and gave me a word and the word there was forceps. Okay. So he gave me the word forceps and I was like, what does forceps mean? So I had to look it up and it's basically this tool that helps birth a baby. Okay. And so the idea was 
God is going to allow this situation to come in your life so that he can produce this gift inside of you. Okay. And I estimated that it was healing, that kind of thing. So when I go forth with this dream, I just want you to keep that in mind and know that when you guys start seeing this come to pass in my life, it did not happen by accident or coincidence or by just randomly waking up there one day, but years of praying, seeking, knocking, asking, and the Lord answering, saying, yes, he will, prophesying it into my life, and then putting the pieces together and establishing the groundwork. All right, so um, this dream, was, uh, like I said, January 14th, 2023. It's a guide coloration dream. It means it's tested, tried and true by me. This type of dream is not only from God, but it is prophetic, meaning it is going to come to pass. Um, and if you look at the picture that I chose for the thumbnail in this, that is kind of a tone of what I consider a God coloration dream. So you see it's kind of a, a sapia, like goldish light that kind of tone and dream very 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 important write it down pray over it okay god is telling you something okay something very important all right so let's pray genesis 40 verse 8 real quick before we dive in all right lord we love you we thank you we thank you that your word in genesis chapter 48 40 verse 8 specifically says that interpretations belong to you and I don't, I, I don't have every detail in this dream. Um, and it is up to you to share with me whatever you will, but I definitely feel inspired, um, and an urgency from you to share this dream with everyone else on here. And so I just ask that you would fill in the blanks so you would do the teaching that you have desired to teach through this. And in Jesus name, we thank you that their ears are open, their eyes are open and our spirits are ready to receive what you are saying and it will fall on good ground in Jesus mighty name. Amen. All right. So I'm in a public restroom. It seems like I'm in a stall and there's another stall next to me. David, who's my husband is in the stall next to me. Only it's not really a toilet, I guess, over where he is. It's more of a desk and he's sitting, working at his desk, staring at the computer, typing things, etc. I guess I'm doing some sort of experiment. Anyway, the thing I'm working on, I guess some of it dripped on the floor. Bruno, who's my dog, my male dog, came in and was licking it up off the floor. I told him not to do that, and I wasn't sure if he could even have that. The next thing I know, he starts to have a seizure. His mouth is kind of locked shut, and he's shaking and trembling all over. I put both of my hands on him, and I said, sickness? I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. David was in the stall next to me and overheard me say this and told me, that's not loud enough, meaning I need to say it again and louder. Without thinking about it at all, I laid my hands on his face again and said it one more time, loud and bold. And when I did, instantly Bruno was healed and was acting like himself, running around, happy, wagging his tail, and so on, like nothing had ever happened. And then, instead of holding Bruno, because I had had him in my arms at the time, I'm holding my phone, and it's like it's a Marco Polo, and it showed Adriana's face. Adriana's an old friend of mine. And then it showed some man's face I've never seen before. He had a very full looking face, light brown hair with a mustache. I would recognize him if I seen him today. And then the faces went away and I was trying to get back to the screen, but couldn't find it on my phone. And then I heard the Lord say, have I not given this to all? Yet since you have asked for it, it is yours. I began weeping and sobbing and realizing that I had just healed Bruno by God's spirit and that I had done a miracle. While I was crying, Jenny, who's my best friend, came in and saw me crying and asked David what was wrong with me and he was telling her. All right, before I get into the line by line, you know, think key points that I want to, um, point out, I want to say something before I absolutely forget to say this because this is so important, guys. This is so incredibly important. It had me stumped, okay? Uh, first of all, 
If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, speak to him in a dream. I make myself known to him in a vision. Okay, it is not unlikely for God to speak in a dream specifically to his prophetic people. Okay, um, everyone can have dreams. Um, you can have a prophetic dream. I'm going to do a foundational biblical teaching on this here real soon. And I have done it in this um, on my channel before. Okay, Pharaoh had prophetic dreams. Okay, doesn't necessarily make him a prophet of God. Okay, but he had a prophetic dream. We see that the baker and the uh, cupbearer had prophetic dreams, needed interpreted by a prophetic person, but they had prophetic dreams. Okay, so very important though that the Lord is absolutely speaking. Not only is this dream 100% from him, I know because I have tested dreams and combed through them with a fine tooth comb over the past nine years, prayed, sought, knocked, fasted, asked, you name it, guys, okay? But I also know his voice, okay? And he, what he says here is super powerful, super important, okay? He says, have I not given this to all? Now, first of all, this dream is both metaphoric and literal, okay? I think most people can look at this dream and get the gist of it. The gist of it is a healing took place, right? It was my dog, or was it? That's a metaphoric piece that needs discerned. It needs discovered. It needs interpreted. This is how God speaks. He speaks in riddles. But most of us can grasp from this, this was a healing dream. And then we can hear the very literal, literal words that the Lord spoke to me. And he said, have I not given this to all? Yet, since you have asked for it, it is yours. Okay, now, when I heard this, when I, two years ago, when I wrote this down, I was like, that's weird. Because why are you saying you'll give it to me since I asked for it? if you've given it to all of us, okay? But here, here is kind of an analogy of this, okay? As we grow in Christ, we are growing up just as our children grow up. My daughter, my oldest daughter is at the age of driving. She is able to drive. It is her right to drive. Everyone at this age, most people, unless they have some sort of medical condition or something, has the right to drive, okay? So therefore, when he says, I have given it to all, you have the right to it, okay? But there are going to be some who will choose not to. But you have asked for it. So therefore, it is yours, okay? So just like my daughter, who um, as soon as she turned the age of driving, she was excited. She wanted to drive, right? And then she got out there a little bit and realized the responsibility of it. She, real, she, she understood the weight of it, okay? That kind of thing and began to, uh, you know, maybe driving's not for me, right? Maybe that's not really what I want, right? And so I just kind of sat back and I'm like, you know what? I don't want her to drive unless she is ready to drive. And when she is ready to drive, she will ask me. She will ask me to drive. And so now she's at the stage where she's asking, mom, can I drive? Mom, can I drive? I want to learn how to drive, okay? And so that is the same way it is with supernatural things. James, I believe this book of James says, sometimes you have not because you ask not, okay? We have not because you ask not. And sometimes, sometimes you ask, but you ask amiss, right? And so God doesn't grant that. And sometimes we, uh, we ask and we still don't have because it just simply isn't time. Look at what I said to you. This was two years ago. The Lord is prophesying to me. He's saying, I've heard your prayers about asking for this healing gift. Uh, there's other things I'm asking for too, but he has specifically answered me according to this. I'm like, Lord, I want to see healings. I want to see signs and wonders. I want to participate in them. Use me, send me, send me, right? And it's not like he just, you know, overnight was like, oh yeah, you know, this is a two year already prophetic thing. And I only now do I feel this. I feel it taking place in my life. I feel a difference. He is 
taking away, like I talked um, last week about dignity. He's stripping away my dignity little by little. And he's saying, this is going to help you. You want this. This is what I need to take away. This is going to help. Here's what I want you to do. You know, don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Yes, because as we step out, like I said, just like my daughter, as she stepped out there and was like, whoa, maybe driving really isn't for me. This is a huge responsibility. This is a lot to take in. This is, you know, I just thought it was going to be bells and whistles. I just thought it was going to be glory and fame. I just thought it was, no, it's not about that, right? But when we really weigh the cost, and everything that we have, and we say, I still want it. I still want it. And we ask for it. It is ours. Okay. So everyone has the right. He said, have I not given this to all? Have I not given this to all? Okay. But since you ask for it, it is yours. Okay. So guys, listen to what I'm saying there. I, I'm not going to go into it. One day I'll give the whole testimony, but there's something changing in my life. There's something taking place. And I know that those forceps that he talked about this thing that he's allowing in my life, this recurring health, annoying issue that has robbed so much from me. Every time I got my hand in something that's successful that I enjoy, this thing comes to poke its ugly little head. And through this, the Lord is teaching me the power of healing, the, the power of speaking life from my mouth, from being so fed up and having righteous anger and being moved by his spirit and full of power to do healing. Okay. So let's go back up to the dream for a minute and just point out some things. And I'm, I'm going to say, look, just like the other dream, there's pieces of this dream that I don't got in the bag. There's things that I understand about dreams and um, it speaks volumes to me in that nature. But God has left certain things, certain details stored up because let's say, let's say Bruno, my dog actually doesn't represent Bruno. And this is a thing that happens in dreams. Okay. If you know that, or if you're familiar with dreams, you realize that. Okay. Bruno can represent, it just represents a healing ministry. Notice I'm running an experiment. That's kind of how we do, right? Every time we lay hands on someone trying to do a healing, we're, we're running an experiment basically, you know, just like they put it in their little test tubes. They're like, well, let's see what happens when I do this. Let's see what happens when it's up against this. Let's see what happens. So I'm running an experiment here. And so maybe Bruno doesn't represent Bruno, my dog. Maybe he does. And that's details that are kept back from me. And the reason God might keep details back like that is because we try to produce things in our own time and in our own way. Let's say that Bruno represents um, a friend of mine, a friend of mine who has seizures right? Let's say it's a friend of mine who has seizures. And so he's keeping these details locked up metaphorically because if he specifically told me who that person was, you better believe that within a week of having this dream, if not the next day, I would have called that person and said, the Lord wants me to lay hands on you and heal you in his name, right? And likely nothing would happen because it wasn't his time and his place. Okay. So that is a reason that he would keep back details. Do you understand? All right. But let's kind of look at some of the things in this for people that may not be so familiar with dreams. Okay. And I'm going to give you a possible interpretation on these things. Cause I have very few confirmations in this dream. So I don't like to speak out of my neck, but I want you to understand the language of dreams and what a likely scenario, a likely interpretation is on a powerful dream like this, that I may not have in the bag, but you can look at it and know 100% what is going on here. Okay. But let's get some, let's try to extract some more details. Okay. All right. So first you see that I'm in a public restroom. Restrooms come up a lot in dreams. They're very common and they can mean a variety of things. And it doesn't mean anything unless the Lord confirms it. Okay. I can go on for days and I can say, well, it means this just like in the English language, we have synonyms. Okay. It's the same thing in dream world. You can have a symbol that means 
10 other things, <laughs> okay? And how you determine sometimes is through context, right? And the process of elimination, and we can be very good. I'm a very strategic thinker. I can, um, I'm trying to think of the, the term and what you would call that. I'm very analytical. Um, I can like weigh out things and test things. And that's what my brain does. I just loves that sort of thing. Okay. But unless God confirms it, it's just a thought. It's just a, just a tentative interpretation. Okay. But a, a public re a restroom sometimes can be a place of prayer. Um, so if you dream that you're in your bathroom or something, you could actually be dreaming about your spiritual life, um, a release in, in your body and what that looks like or a washing, right? In the bathroom, we either release or we wash, right? And so the same, we do the same thing spiritually. We either become washed, right? In our prayer time, or we need to release something, right? Um, when you're in a public restroom, that means you're in public. That means you're in public with this. Okay. So notice I'm in a public restroom. All right. It says, uh, I'm in a stall and there's a stall next to me. However, er, and who, who's in the stall next to me? My husband, right? David. Well, in dreams, your husband can represent your husband or he can represent the Lord. Just as it says in Isaiah, your husband is your maker. Your maker is your husband, right? So the same thing because that can come up in dreams, ladies. Okay. I don't know what it's like to be a man and dream about the Lord. Maybe they just dream about him as a father because he can come as a father in your dream. Okay. As your, as your earthly dad and actually is representing your father in heaven. All right. So my husband, the Lord here is in the stall next to me. Okay. But remember, it's not really a bathroom. It's just, there's some sort of divider between us in this public realm that we're in. Okay. And only on his side where he's at, there's not a toilet. Notice I say that there's, there's not a toilet. It's more of a desk. He's sitting, working at his desk typing. Now my husband is a computer guy and he sits at a desk and he types and he works. He programs, he does web stuff, you know? And so this is how it comes up and it reflects in our dreams. But this dream is not about my husband. This is about the Lord. Okay. And so he's sitting over there working at his desk, right? And I'm over here running some sort of experiment. And I believe that this experiment that I'm running is healing. That's the experiment that I'm running. I'm running a test on trying to put the Lord's work in this gifting in my life into action. That's what I believe this is not confirmed but this with lots of years of dreams and the way that the Lord speaks, this is what I'm, I'm professing. Okay. And he knows my heart and I'm just giving you a temporary, um, lot tentative <laughs> interpretation here and we'll see how the pieces fit. Okay. All right. So I'm working on them on some things and some of it dripped on the floor and Bruno, my dog comes in and licks it up. Okay. And then I'm like, should he even have that? Right. I'm like, is he allergic to it? Okay. Now, maybe this is literal. Maybe this is about my dog and I'm going to be running some experiments in the kitchen and it, he drips on the floor and he comes in and he's allergic and then he starts having a seizure. That is a possible solution. Okay. But more likely Bruno represents somebody. Like I said, Bruno represents, um, this, whoever my test subject is someone who licks this up off the floor and says, I will let you run this experiment on me. And not only do they do that, but I believe that this person has seizures. Okay. And so his mouth is kind of locked up, shut, he's shaking, trembling all over. Right. Um, and I put both of my hands on his face, right. I'm just grabbing his, his face like this. My dog, he's just a little, uh, chocolate and tan, uh, miniature dachshund. So I grab his face like this. Right. And I say sickness. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. And then my husband, the Lord, who's overhearing this, right? I said, he overhears me say this. And he says, that's not loud enough. Meaning I needed you. I need you to say that again and louder this time. Right? So without thinking, without further ado, without hesitation, I put my hands on his face again. And this time I say it loud and bold. And I say, sickness, I command you in the name of Jesus to leave, right? 
end. What happens? Instantly, guys, instantly he was healed, acting like himself, running around happy, wagging his tail like nothing ever happened. And again, this can be literal about my dog. It could be the first thing that I do, lay hands on him and he's healed in Jesus' name. You know, when there's something he gets into that isn't good for him. Or it can represent somebody else who struggles with this type of sickness, or maybe I don't even know them. Maybe they're not a friend of mine, but I happen to be in the right place at the right time and someone is having a seizure. And God's like, now, now is the time. And I'm like, let me run this experiment and see if it works. Like sickness, I command you. And God says louder, say, say it again. And this time, like you mean it, you know? And it takes time, guys. It takes time to develop. Some of us are really good at this sort of thing. But for me, this is an area that I have struggled in that I said, the Lord is doing a work in it, in me through this. Okay. He is showing me that right there. Change that. You know, it, it takes time. And I, I talked about this in the live last week that I did, or sorry, two weeks ago that I did where I was talking about our dignity and how our dignity and our pride gets in the way of our miracles, of our healings, of our signs and wonders, and how I use that as an analogy with my son and how my son was afraid to talk. He wanted it to be so perfect that he didn't talk for a long time. And some of us are like that, right? And then we start to talk and, and, and we're like, that sounded weird. It didn't sound like it, everyone else does. And it takes time until we build a confidence with the language. It literally, the, this, this faith uh, life is a, a speaking faith is, is a language. And it goes against what our flesh understands and what our flesh finds comfortable and what our, our flesh finds easy. Okay. And so it's, it's a language. And just like we start as a small child and we learn our own language, we have to start as a small child inside of our spirits and learn the language of the spiritual realm. Okay. I've seen this in so many different things in dreams, guys, we, Jesus says, unless you come as a small child, right? We have to come not leaning into our own understanding not having dignity and pride. My son in that video, he was desperate enough that he had to speak up for himself. And, and sometimes when we're desperate enough, we lose our dignity. Okay. Think of drug addicts. Think of alcohol addicts, guys. They have lost their dignity. They are so desperate that they've lost their dignity. And when we, we seek God the same way, we're going to find him. Because that desperation to find him sheds dignity off of us, sheds pride off of us. And he is pleased by our humility and our faith, okay? So that's what this is about, okay? All right, let's look at a couple more lines and then we will close. But we see Bruno was instantly healed. He walks off acting like it was nothing. And then I said, then I'm holding my phone instead of my dog, right? And it turns into this person that I know, their face. Um, and then it turns into this other guy that I didn't know, right? And then I'm trying to get back to it. What I believe that that means, because I've had dreams like this. And again, these aren't confirmed details, but this is just to get you thinking out of the box and understanding the dream language, okay? I believe that represents that from this, from this healing that turned into healing this person and healing this guy I've never seen before and who knows what else, okay? And then you see that I was trying to get back to that screen, right? Because I woke up and it was like, oh, you know, this is going to happen tomorrow because I told you when the voice of the Lord speaks, it is like it happened yesterday, you know, <laughs> like it's happening now. It's happening right now, right now, right now. But again, it's been two years since this, since this prophecy and I'm seeing signs of this taking place in my life and, and um, training up along the way, okay? So that part where I'm saying, you know, I try to get back to it, I believe that's what that was. It was relating to like, no, how, but how do I get to this? How do I get to that screen where I was healing people, you know, in my mind, right? And so then we go on and we see what the Lord himself says. And he says, have I not given this to all? But since you have asked for it, it is yours. Okay. So 
again, guys, what is taking place in my life? What can be taking place in your life? is not by coincidence, is not by just waking up there, but is by harvesting years of seeking, knocking, and asking. It says, ask, and it will be given to you. Keep seeking, keep knocking, keep asking, right? These are the things Jesus is talking about. Yes, he's given it to all, right? We look around, we're like, well, why aren't more people doing it? Are they asking for it? And if they are asking for it, are they asking to miss, right? So they can just be famous. Or are they asking and they haven't received it yet because there's a time stamp on it, right? The Lord says it is not for you to know times and seasons, right? But the Lord's going to do it. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will fulfill it. All right, so... That's it for today, but I did want to share that dream um, because I know that the Lord is, is uh, fulfilling these prophecies in my life piece by piece, little by little, and I'm excited to go on this journey with Him. But guys, I'm no different. I'm no different. You can do the same. If we humble ourselves and ask and seek His face, He will reward us. He will reward us. He will grant us those things. He is waiting for us to come to that responsible level that says, yes, I know. I know the cost. You, you, maybe you started out and you're like, yeah, I want that. Oh man, everyone else is doing it, right? I want that, right? And, and then you get a little taste of it and you're like, yeah, you know, there's a lot of responsibility behind that. And I think that's the place where a lot of the people in the church are subconsciously we understand the level of expectation and responsibility when we want bigger things, okay? God's saying, you want bigger things from me, I want bigger things from you, and we're not willing to do those bigger things on our part, and we know that, so we don't ask. We stop asking, right? But if we were a people who accepted the responsibility level, accepted the sacrifice level, and said, yes, still, Lord, send me. I want this gift. I want this gift in my life. He says, have I not given it to all? But since you asked for it, it's yours. Okay. So I hope that blesses you guys. And I look forward to seeing you in other videos, particularly other dream videos. Those are my favorite. Anyway, God bless you guys. I'll see you.